What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking about the season finale of the Halo show season two. And in this video, we're going to jump into our non spoiler discussion where we give our good, the bad and our final verdicts in our official score for the episode. And then we're going to jump into the, the entire spoiler discussion about the plot points that happen of the entire episode, discussing the good events, some bad talking points, and it's going to be a really fun ride and at the very end. We're going to give our overall outlook about the season two as a whole. And I think there's a lot of things we have to discuss, especially with the kind of mixed feelings that the season had by the end. So before we jump into it, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's start off with our good. And when I'm thinking about this, for the most part, this episode did a pretty good job at giving some really good action packed scenes and their animations, I think, were pretty good for the amount of budget and for just what we've seen with the show so far so a lot of war war style scenes a lot of spartans with armor i was very shocked that i saw spartans wearing their equipment because for the most of the show we really haven't seen much of that uh the spartan threes obviously were struggling but overall i feel like they actually had some really good scenes with some combat against the covenant and i think they did a good job with at least appeasing for, for the action components and and right off the bat, the pacing was was pretty intense. Like, I think the episode didn't really have a lot of like slow, just menial things. Like the, a lot of times, sometimes these episodes had some slow points or some points that I wish I wish they took back. Right? But this one, they actually did a good job. They actually made it where everything felt like something was going on and you kind of had to pay attention because you, you could miss something that was pretty important. So I feel like they, they did a good job with their pacing and their animations here. But Hockey, what was something you thought that was good? Yeah, I'll definitely agree with you there. The the battle scenes were uh, good without, and you know that that's kind of what we've been waiting for. Uh, so you know the fans have kind of been waiting to see Master Chief kind of you know do what we know he can do. Uh, but other than that, I thought kind of the, the opening scene was pretty interesting uh, with Miranda and uh, you know that that lab assistant or that scientist, that other scientist, and kind of watching the animation of of the gene kind of uh, you know mutation. We'll get into what that is later but i thought that was a pretty cool scene uh to, to start with and Legilica, what is the good you had here yeah um before we end you know talk about the elf in the room uh we're all kind of sick in this episode the, so the energy is not the greatest um i think we've all been infected by the flood um from this episode but um, yeah. the good of this i have to say is i i thought the actual scenes were pretty solid um you know, this is what we've kind of been waiting for, to see the Spartans fighting the Covenant. We got a really nice uh, space battle scene. Um, we got, you know, the big confrontation uh, between, you know, Chief and the Arbor in this one. I thought it was pretty solid. And the introduction um, that has been kind of hinted at the last episode, which is that other factor in the big Halo world, which is this, you know, historic... Uh, evil or whatever you want to call it i mean it's the flood right so we'll talk you know and and their their introduction obviously created a lot of buzz which i thought was good yeah i mean that was kind of the the, the point i was going to get to in the spoilers is that i i am the i guess you say the 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 how horrible it is to pass on sickness and viruses i was the level of janine from this episode and passing the, the infection to multiple people uh so that's kind of that's my role in this sickness but yeah, and then with the good, we need to talk about the bad. And and the problem that I'm going to have is that this is almost kind of like a seasonal issue. And it's kind of like, you know, they they are this is the last episode of the season. And there's still a lot of things that are just left unchecked. There's a lot of things that they don't really explain in the end. And I feel like they I get it. It's last season, last episode. You got to kill off a lot of people. You got to you got to make some things happen at the end. And I feel like of all the storylines that they were creating, really one of them had its full conclusion and everything else was kind of just left out there right and and i'm not granted if you're having for the long haul like an episode uh, you know storylines for the long haul sure that's not going to get finished in, in one season but some of these other like plot points there's still a lot of holes that make no sense or or have have faltered in giving us information that we should we should know heading into season three like we're talking about season three of a show and we still don't really understand some some key components. So I feel like the writers, I, I know that they have different writers roughly for every episode, but they kind of work in collaboration. But it kind of feels like they they have not really been as consistent as I would like to see 
in a show that is quote from paramount this is supposed to be their their game of thrones right and i feel like because of they have all these different branching story plots it kind of lessens the impact of some of the the, the ones that we really want to see and i feel like that's one of some of the things i saw with this is that this episode kind of had some really good parts with that and then sometimes they kind of just sped through some things because they needed to get to the end or right? and and they just like flew through something like i feel like this was this episode necessarily wasn't encompassing a lot of major problems but it it was a the, a whole series problem that resulted at the end where i just kind of was like you had you rushed through so much stuff that you're doing well with and you just you missed out on it so i feel like that was kind of one of the issues i had uh, Bahaki, what was something bad that you saw here? I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll kind of keep it uh, short and sweet here. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you. It was probably the plot holes, uh, and it was throughout. But, uh, again, through two seasons, I still don't really know where Quan stands uh, 100% really. And this, this episode, especially near the end of the second half, we'll kind of get to it in the spoilers, um, kind of cemented my com- confusion um, and same thing with uh, Maki. I think they had an opportunity here to, to do something and they kind of, you know, obviously went the way that the writing has been going. So it's really the plot holes for me. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's going to be a confusing third season if it gets, uh, you know, a, a green light. And uh, Angelica, what is your bad here? Um. Yeah, I mean, Mars, you mentioned about... Uh, pacing i thought the pacing was awful in this episode um and i think what you and you maybe you can clarify you mean like there was not really boring parts which that that i agree with there wasn't really any boring parts in this episode but you have to rush through such major moments uh so quickly um that the impact that you were trying to leave uh just didn't really hit with me um there are some big time points um in this episode that was supposed to have this emotional impact um and it just didn't land and i think it's kind of some of the execution some of the writing um the plot holes as well continue to be kind of this ball and chain on this season um and the show overall um and again i'm not someone who like we've talked about time and time again if you if people want to look past them people love the show you're more than more than welcome to uh, I don't I don't dis- disparage anybody from loving the show. It's just that like there is some they're, they're, they're making changes to to source material just for change. Right. It, it, there's not really a rhyme or reason for it. Some of them there is, but some of them there really isn't. And it continues to show kind of how we flew past this. And I think it's because of the budget issues and the uncertainty of season. If there is a season three that it's like we got to get to these parts in the story to build up you know, hype. Yeah. And you know what it is? I, I completely agree with you that the fact that it, it wasn't necessarily saying that there is a boring parts. It was kind of like the point you said that you flew through the, probably the most important scenes of the, sh- of the show so far. And you're not giving that life, but then at the same time, we wasted time on other things and, and others of the episodes that you're like, imagine you were to like give reach a little bit more time, or maybe what if you gave like the flood, a whole episode, just about the flood component or, Things like that. Like, I feel like you could have done so much more with just just spreading things out. And it felt like you're, you're wasting time with the shaman lady in all the previous episodes. And like, it's just it was a Kessler story. Like, you could have taken that stuff out in other episodes and just given more depth to some of these storylines that you're doing. And even that would have helped it get a lot more popularity. Because I know that there's people that love it and adore it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also a lot of people out there that hate it. So it's like you have to to get more people on board. Give them give them their the breathing room. Let the stories breathe, and then maybe more people might enjoy them, right? And I think that was the biggest problem for me. Now, when it comes to our final verdict, you know, it was kind of like, and I saw some people online say this, and, and I, I kind of feel the same way. When I first saw the episode, I think my my positivity was a little bit more higher, and I then I started to think about some of the key things that that were happening and I, I kind of the my number started to go down a little more meaning that like yeah you know at the time and this is something that a lot of people do and when you see glimpses of greatness that the show could have been where you see action scenes i don't want to ruin anything but you see a kimbo needlers and, you, and i made it i i think a, a joke to myself 
We saw more akimbo needlers in Halo show than we've seen in any 3 for 3 Halo game this entire time. Like, just think about that. And people were, were hyped about it all online. And I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty cool scene. You know, like all that stuff. And you see some good fights, you know, obviously like happened throughout the whole episode. Like, but then I think to myself, well, that's that's just me looking at the bright spots and not thinking about this as a whole picture of what the whole episode of what it's doing. And because of I was thinking about that and I said, hey, there are some good scenes, but the execution and what it is fits in the whole systematic how they handle this episode and how they handle the season finale and what they're trying to do going forward. I'm probably going to give this a seven. I think this is a better than average. This is definitely a better than average episode. I think this is definitely in the top, probably top four of the top half of the episodes that they did for the season. I think it's probably probably third best or fourth best in my opinion. I feel like the first and in, in mid in, in the fall of Reach were probably up there. Um, and then the, the prequel to Reach was a really good episode. And this one probably fits right in that third fourth spot for me right i feel like it was a really good episode with combat but at the same time there was also some some moments that you just were puzzled why they did certain things and and i'll we'll talk more about it in the spoiler section but i feel like for me a seven is a good spot for it. it's not it's not bad there's some people going down to three for this episode i'm not giving that three it's a seven for me i feel it's better than the average but there are some glaring issues too so hockey what is your rating here yeah, I'm pretty close to you. I have this one at a 7.3, so it's, you know, in the higher, um, you know, uh, echelon, I guess, of the episodes for me. But, um, you know, it was it was good. I, I like the action. That was probably the best part of it. Um, yeah, again, we got to see Chief in his full armor, which was uh, super key. And, again, he looks great. I know you guys always, uh, you know, kind of harp on that. When he has his armor on, uh, it does look very, very good. So, um, again action-packed it was good and that pretty much goes for the season which we didn't really have a whole lot with at least uh, you know master chief and the silver team but again plot holes really kind of killed it kwan uh maki so uh you know in the in the lower sevens for me with this episode and Legelica, what is your rating yeah I'm, I'm at a seven uh i think as a non-halo fan if i took all the halo stuff out you know i i could see people giving this an eight um at a ten but um, you know, as a Halo fan, I feel like this is a six. Um, so I'm going to go with like, you know, in between, um, I hit a seven again, above average episode. Uh, I think in the upper half of the episodes that went down, but I do think season one finale was a better, uh, episode than this one. Um, and again, there's such, there's these high moments that Mars man mentioned. There's such high moments in this, but then there's just this lingering plot holes that are just so painful. And I, I don't agree with some of the ways that they've introduced, we'll go into spoilers on aspects like the flood um, and some of the choices that they made. But then there's moments where the flood is involved uh, that look really good. So it's, it's just such a mixed bag for me um, that there is some highs, but then there's some real lows. And uh, to me, again, this is an above average episode. I'm giving it a seven out of 10. Well, that's going to be it for a non-spoiler discussion. We're going to head off into our spoiler discussion about the different plot points heading into the second half of the video. But if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We'll see you now in the spoiler discussion. All right, guys, so we are here in spoiler discussion. And, and what we're going to do here is kind of talk about the major plot points that happen. And at the end, we're going to kind of give our overarching feeling of season two as a whole and, and maybe discuss whether or not there will be a season three because there's a lot of questions whether you know paramount will actually pay for another one and maybe how much the budget will be for season three so let's start off with kind of the start of the episode and, and this is actually they do this kind of in like a quentin tarantino style of, of setup where they start the episode with uh with master chief talking to some somebody in the darkness right and he's just sitting there talking to him you know kind of you know talking about you know you are how should i trust you you know she said the same thing like that type of stuff trying to like it's very just vague you don't really know who he's talking to or anything and then it cuts right to um obviously the whole situation at hand that we just left off from last episode and one of the th first parts and i think this was uh kind of a lot of people were debating how you start this episode or how you should end and i was i was surprised they started with the whole releasing of the flood and 
basically the way this happens is Miranda is studying that little artifact that she found in the previous episode and it unlocked she was all excited and so now she's analyzing it and inside that little piece of metal is it seems the, the flood spores and, and it kind of looks like it's a piece of a sample that was found with the forerunners that they were that they found out was on onyx because remember onyx was built a on a for, forerunner laboratory or forerunner city so uh so now miranda's investigating this and then we got some annoying ass scientist janine shows up and she's just constantly talking her ear off and you know like and so miranda and she's just constantly badgering her about questions and all this stuff she's like you know i became a biologist because your mother and she's like that's great awesome and, and then she kind of also was like you, you didn't touch the the artifact right and because she was investigating it and she saw that like there are spores here and, and they're growing and then she's like she's worried like because we don't know what the hell this thing is and she's like no no i i didn't i didn't touch it and right off the bat the way that she answered we all knew that she did right because she was very awkwardly answering that and the first thing i thought to myself was you're a biologist and you're touching a unknown unknown alien piece of whatever this thing is spore and you even said it this is a oh this is untapped spores you're a biologist you think that this thing can't transfer by human contact or of any kind like um, you're touching it with your finger and then what are you doing you're eating a freaking apple with the hand that you probably touched it with not washing your hands and at all touching everybody and then like on the, on the pathway leaving the scientist where she's then like touching everybody and what they started doing was that they had like this like rom-com music that was playing in the background like yeah, it was just all happy go lucky music. i'm gonna start touching everybody we're going to go high five gonna start high-fiving everyone as i'm walking down the hall and then she starts getting infected and now granted i think the whole scene of her slowly but surely getting infected was a was a cool concept because that kind of shows you like how she's getting infected and how dumb she is is she's touching all these people and which means they're getting infected slowly but surely as well and then eventually she she busts loose and like you can tell she's bugging out right but th that's how we're starting that's how the first part really ends is that you can see all right infection is happening right and she ends up straight up breaking i think it was like a pen or something it just stabs a scientist in the neck and then she starts getting really tackled what i find hilarious was that if they pan out of that room not a soul notices like that what the hell's going on in that room even like miranda's like maybe a few offices over she's just like mm, 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 mm. it's like oh, yeah and like like if people are freaking out in the room over you, you probably would hear that stuff happen but that's how it starts and i feel like i i like the way they introduced like when it comes to like the infections i don't like how they just straight up oh the flood are now here like this is this is a biologist a known character we haven't seen her before and she just unveiled a galactic threat that will change the entire storyline right that's kind of how important the flood is and like how why would you do that why would you be, instead of following in maybe making it more of a big deal or how better yet i know i know this is going to throw everybody into a loop but it's crazy why don't you just have it on the ring like it was originally like in the games and all that like the, it was not saying the flood was only on rings but in this in this area where the ring is literally right there that's how the the flood get unleashed right now it's like on onyx it's like whoa are they gonna get to the ring now is like is they are they gonna travel to the ring the flood because th that makes no sense to me like if it's on the ring already that's where the fight is everyone's on the ring fighting each other but now you're on onyx it just means that so that means only humans are fighting the flood unless the flood take a ship they light speed to the ring like all that stuff then you're just adding in extra steps that you could have avoided by just following the simple plan that the games did it's just it makes my numbing right it's my and we'll get to the all the stuff that happens in a moment but kind of just want to get your opinions about this look because this is a big moment right so we're, yeah. Uh, yeah so so angelica what would you feel about it um this is one of the things i hated i hated how the flood um love the aspect of the flood it brings you know again we'll talk about things that i really liked which is kind of the and, and part of it was in this which is like the the scientist Janine decaying, right? Like you could see it's like starting to take over and she's losing it. Um, but this is a biologist who touching an unknown substance, right? She's kind of like berating Miranda um, 
you know, that she isn't a biologist, but then why would you not only you, you know, you touched it, but then why are you touching other people? Like it's so, it, it's like beyond stupid. It, it, it's like the most, and now we have an unknown character who has now started a galactic spread of the flood. Um, so it's just, it, it's just human stupid, like the, the massive human stupidity. Um, and that's how the flood is, is released. And again, those that have watched the show and not played the games. And again, they don't have to be the exact same thing, but those are one of those most impactful things where, you know, even Miranda knew that these were spores that are, you know, they don't know exactly what it does, but she knows that like they can duplicate very quickly um, and infect people. And it's just like, how is this person this stupid? Um, and that's how this is this parasite gets sent out into the galaxy. You know what it is, and I'll, get, I'll let you talk in a minute, but it's like, you know what it is in the game? It was a mixture of Covenant's hubris and humans' humor, uh, hubris. They both didn't know what this facility was, and by accident, and how about this? By accident, they both went, went in, and they even locked it, realizing that it was actually Chief that unlocked the door that ended up getting the flood out, right? That was kind of like the crazy component of that. Like, it was a mixture of, like, humans and Covenant and even Chief yeah, oh, but these are like all soldiers, right? Yeah, so like they, it, they was, it was a mission. Better. Yeah, this is a scientist who's touching. That's yeah. the part that makes it the, a dumb loophole. It's like this is a biologist, right? It's literally like, their their profession to know about yeah. this stuff. Like in hockey, what did you feel about this flood? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. Again, the flood is one of the coolest things about uh, kind of the Halo story. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the way they kind of did it was a, a little silly, kind of a nobody, um, but a scientist kind of going against the code of, of science and, and touching something and then, you know, giving high fives and, and handshakes to people. But um, again, the, the flood again, <laughs> in, in the other half of the second half, they, they do something a little silly as well, how, how they uh, continually introduce the flood. And we'll get into that. But, um, you know, again, the, the scientists stab and the other scientist was was pretty funny i think but uh, other than that it was kind of silly the way they did it you know what it is like they they say that the flood does bring in aggression cannibalistic things so like i i'm okay with the fact that she just broke out and just stabbed the guy because of yeah. aggression stuff because i yeah. it just they have no control over there at that point um yeah the game part was cool i thought yeah. that was all all well and how fast i know people were kind of you know, like, why she, it. like, decay that fast? Well, you know, in the games, it's yeah, fast. Yeah, it was, it was, like, near instant. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. took, it took a few moments. It, it just depends on, it depends on, um, you know, what their purpose of you is. Like, that's kind of a part of it is. Like, if they want you attacking somebody, they're just taking your body over instantly, right? That was kind of part of all what I also saw, too. Um, now, right after that, we get into the, the fight back near the ring. And this is where we have Perez and the other Spartan 3s are setting up with Kai trying to start their mission and right off the bat it, it starts horribly and you know the the ship gets blown up they get sent into space not a bad scene when it comes yeah. to like how hectic war is like i'm not against what that with that whole thing um but the whole time and this is my only thing and i know people are going to be like mars you're, you're just being cynical or whatever but i couldn't stand that the entire maybe 15 minutes of that scene perez had, never got her shit together she was constantly bugging out and she maybe moments before she straight up told her friend hey hey get, get it together i got your back you got my back that's all we got to do and then lily in five seconds later just lose she's constantly just like bah, 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 bah. and it's kai's just be like all right press, press. He, she's like baby over like over her shoulder just like okay okay all right all right like you know like i'm not saying Perez needs to be a badass like sergeant johnson just clearing hallways but like I did see that in the simulation that she was doing that just a few times, a few episodes before. So like you could give me like she's bugging out, but then she asked she what's crazy about this whole sequence was that she knows that this is a, a one way trip. You know, she she you know later in the episode she even says that I knew this is a, a one way mission. Yeah. Right. And she so like you know that you got nothing else to lose. You're fighting for humanity. Like, it's almost like, not saying you shouldn't be scared, but at the same time, she only even had the whole scene with Master Chief. Like, saying, you know, like, I'm I'm, I'm trying to be like you. You just you, you just fight. You don't think. You just do what you have to do. Right? And and so it's kind of like, I wish I saw more of that of her. 
because I, I started to like her more as a character because she was like she was becoming that. And then all of a sudden they just threw that out the window. And now it's really just Kai is the only one there that has her shit together, really. Um, and, and really guiding her forward. Now, the fights are OK. I like the, the fact that they had like the use of the invisibility for the Covenant and getting sneak attacks on these soldiers. Kind of funny that, you know, Paramount choose, picks and chooses which aliens will show up today. Um, like in the first half of the season, it was Jackal's Elites. Second half of the season, it was, oh, sorry, last two episodes of the season, Grunt's Elites. They're sold, you can't, and there's no Hunters. Hunters got fired. They got banished from the uh, from the Covenant. Um, you know, Jackals, they, 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 got, they, got, they all called out sick that day. They couldn't make it to the ship. So they all, they, they couldn't fill in everybody, right? They couldn't, you know, they, not everyone could be there. You know, they even had a brute a few episodes ago, but nope, nope, brutes here, right? No more brutes. No, no. So nothing else, you know? Um, so, you know, it's like a, hey, there's a good and then there's some bad there, right? So I feel like yeah. some of that part was fine, uh, but I feel like there's just like some, some scenes of that that I felt like they could have done that a little bit better. So the first part of that, though, was cool. I thought the, the whole war feeling, but at the same time, then you get this cringe ass conversation between John and Paragotsky, the whole glad to have you back with his son. And he's like, I don't take orders from you. Like, I didn't even like I like we're fighting for humanity, John. You know, if you don't get to the ring, we're all going to die. So, you know, she even says the line because I was like, I was sitting there watching like, hey, you know, these Spartans are dying to give you time to get there. And she even says that. And I was like, okay, good. Because that's exactly what they're doing. And he's just like, I don't take orders from you. I'd do it. And then she turns off her turns off her thing when she's saying that. Like, it's just like, are we dealing with like a 10 year old? Is this like a 10 year old that's playing soldier right now? It's like, dude, you, you are fighting for humanity. Like, that's like your, that's your purpose, right? That's, that's the purpose of what Mass Chief does. So I'm not against that, that dynamic of, hey, should I, help my friends or not like that that is a good this good thinking point but we have a guy who just has to say he always has to say something like he he could have said less words there and i would have probably thought it would be a little bit better writing overall but i just felt like this this fringe fest a little when it came to some of the stuff he was saying but i want to give you guys a little a moment to talk about that but uh, Legilica, what would you feel about that, that that all that fighting that happened with the uh, covenant and unsc and our cringe yeah. man um, well, you know, there were some cool set pieces, right? And out in space, you see that like the ship blow up. Um, I think it what gives kind of that. I was not as down as as Mars was on this um, scene because I think what kind of pushes that feeling is they do this thing where it's showing the out of body experience and then in Perez's helmet, and like it's her breathing heavy and stuff like that. So it's like it, it makes it look like Perez is is you know bugging. And she probably is bugging, but like, you know, that that going back and forth kind of sets that tone that that she's kind of losing it. But I tell you what, once they get to the ship, they get inside, you know, the fight with the elites and we saw a grunt, you know, like that all was good stuff to me. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff, again, where all the little details, yeah, I can I can overlook some of the stupid little details um, because you know that's what we're looking for right and and you can't do it all the time but i agree too it's very strange how you know we can never get a full covenant arsenal like hunters jackals grunts brutes elites you know like it, it has to be very pick and choose um but you know being able to to see kind of the the fighting and in the space battle is is a big thing and for the cringe thing you know like the parent Kosky, you know it was funny that you know she tells John that, hey, you know, they're going to buy you time for you to get to the ring. That should have been the mission from the get go. Right. Instead of trying to have John killed and then the suicide bomb, the suicide bomb should be the backup mission. And that's the part that kind of drives me crazy is actually, yeah, this this now start mission where it's like get to the ring. We're going to hold off the fleet as long as we can. You know, like that should have been the, the mission from the get go. So, like, that's what's kind of dumb. And then the back and forth cutting comms. You know, between them and Parangosky made the line like, you're not doing this for me. You're doing this for humanity. It's like, yes, that's the lesson learned is that UNSC is not good. But you know what? We need Master Chief to save humanity, not for the UNSC. Yeah, that's literally the whole point of what we try to say this whole time. Haki, what uh, yeah. what, what do you want to say about this before we jump to the next part? Yeah, so Parangosky, I think, is probably the, the weakest character. She's uh, fleeting on me. So that conversation... Uh, back and forth kind of bickering was 
uh, kind of lost on me. But that battle scene, uh, very realistic, uh, kind of flying through the air. Uh, a couple people were hitting the dead bodies. I think it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, squad number two that was kind of floating out there uh, that couldn't even reach these ships. Uh, but I, I thought that battle scene was, was pretty good. Um, again, but it just, it kind of makes me sad. It's just some uh, bad writing ended up happening and we didn't get more of that so um you know we'll have to kind of see what the the future holds in, in general but at least for that portion that was a a, a good shot for me I, I feel like here's the thing it's like you know with the whole point of the spartans like we're here to buy you time then why is it that you wanted to kill the spartan twos you know what i mean that's like that's where like you know the the story plots that they tell to like to like use as like plot armors or to, to create like a sense of like oh here's a story plot like the UNSC versus is versus Master Chief what are we gonna do like but at the same time it's like Paragotsky so now you're okay with Chief because he's you need him for the mission it's like then what's the point of getting rid of him because of control right it just makes no sense it's just you, you that, that's the line you could say this whole time like John you're not doing this for me you're just doing this for humanity right and even like Kai, like it's just a whole plot of that, of like we gotta get rid of the Spartan twos. Except Kai, Kai can stay alive, but everybody else we gotta get rid of. Rid of. What you're telling me if they, if you tell them the plan that hey we need to get to the Halo Ring and you guys are our main fighting force to get there, we're using Spartan threes as cannon fodder. You don't think that that people would be more on board with that story? That because that's like exactly what happens. Like that's literally what what occurs in the games basically. So it's just like it's like what. Why well, change that when you end up getting to a similar point in the show anyway? It's like I don't I don't get that point. Now, right from there, we're getting back to Onyx Base, and this is where the flood's about to break out completely. And and we have Ackerson in jail with Kessler and Liara, and you know, in the same jail cell as that flood lady's uh Janine, and she's already basically already gone at that point. And at the same time, Quan and, and Soren are making their way into the base and, and Quan is getting these like visions of oh, the monsters watching me. Like she says to Soren and Soren's like, Great, you could stay here if you want. Like I it was almost like Soren's like just saying like just savage stuff, but you know, she comes with him anyway. And and it's like we're we're getting these constant switches between the Ionic space and the fight itself. We we jump right back into the fight where now they're inside the base. We already talked about it. So they basically are, are fighting each other. But this is where I think is a good part. Once they get into like the main hangar of like one of the coveted ships and they're struggling, a lot of Spartans are dying and they're running out of ammo. And all of a sudden the UNSC fleet shows up. And they're like, hey, we're here to help you out. And the Covenant just blasts them like out of the sky. And I was like, damn, that's messed up. Yeah. I thought that, that was, was a cool. good, that was a cool scene. Cause I was like, they just transferred like, all right, hell yeah, cruiser, we're here to help. And then they just get laser, just get glassed right out of the sky and I was yeah, like oh, man. That one. and I was like oh that was pretty I was like damn that was that was pretty that was pretty good and and then like what this is where the, one of the dumb scenes happens I think the 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 story idea of Master Chief having to decide do I go to the Halo ring stick to the mission or do I go and try to save some Spartans my friends the people I consider family like that's not a bad idea because that would be something that, like, you could see Chief having a dilemma over, right? Saving people or sa thinking about the greater good, right? So he then he has all these flashbacks about him telling the story of the flipping the coin and is it luck or not? And then he's just looking at the at the quarter and all that. And, and then all of a sudden, like, when he has to make a decision, I think the dumbest thing that happened, he then flips the coin and it slows down time the coin like flipping at the end and then it cuts away i could have i would have rather him do like a him like just over dramatic just him holding the, the coin and then just like just grip it like this and then it just transitions to him i rather him do that and do like the ping oh it heads or tails and then, it, like, then we figure out like yeah he's gonna go help out the scene that he shows up though is a great scene where they are fighting the covenant they're like we're about to run out and then he shows up and he just starts battling a bunch of elites at the same time and like he kills them all and he walks in and like oh it's the chief he's here like that's a good scene like i'm i like that stuff like that's that 
shows me that like yeah there are some and, and even the lines he says sound like it sound like what john would say in the game it's just like these are short lines like straight to the point no no bullshit it's just him talking him saying like being con being concise being stern right and they're, they're basically saying hey you know uh at this point in time one of the best scenes that a lot of people were harping on was the whole perez gets shot she's doing the needler like double needles and to kill people which i was like hey great akimbo's we haven't had that in maybe more than a decade but that's great to see that we actually have that again and you know perez is, is basically passing out and they're getting her off the ship entirely while kai is going to stay behind on the covenant ship and chief and she tells chief you got to get to the ring like we'll hold off as long as we can right and then he says okay i'm, I'm going right and he then heads out now i think from this point we're it, like i said it keeps jumping back and forth but now we get to uh, Maki, right? Now, Maki is here talking with, with Cortana, and she's trying to come off like some some badass, like, you know, and she, they're trying to do this whole badass arc with her that she, I'm not, I'm no one's pet. Like, no one's controlling me anymore. And he's like, then you, can you tell the future, Cortana, what I'm going to do next? And she's like, you're going to break my thing. Like, he's like, yeah. I am and then like she basically says you're gonna get in my way you're not gonna tell me about John and so then she stomps on Cortana not a bad thing for a villain to do I'm okay with what she did it kind of sets up a really dumb moment in the next in the next part but I am okay with Maki trying to be more of a bitch like I, I'm okay with that he's a villain right? you need to be like you can't just pick and choose when you want to be that especially if John's in the room right? you have to be the one all the time and we, then we get to the now the big scene with the flood, right? And this is where Juan and Soren are going through the prison. And this is where a lot of people, um, I think all three of us kind of shook our heads when we saw this. So Juan and Soren are going through the prison. You know, this is a flood have already started taking over. It's starting getting, you know, pretty hectic down the prison cells. And all of a sudden people are just standing still. They're not moving. They're not like, clearly they're not like there. But then people are doing like random, random things. Random things. We got guys like checking his watch, like playing, playing on his iPhone. Like, yeah, like a flash mob. Yeah, like yeah, people like one guy's tying his shoe yeah. and he's just frozen. You guys, one guy's like dabbing and he's just frozen and it's just like, yeah, like, but they're like doing a bunch of random actions and they're all like in a prison cell. So like these are random actions like in the in the security sector. Oh, they're in the facility getting to the prison. I know. I'm just but. like they're in the security sector. Just random things that you probably would expect people all to be doing at the exact same time. But they're all doing it, right? Yeah. And and they're just walking right past them. Don't touch them. Just like mm -mm, sneak by this guy. And then as they walk out the room, they turn and they look at him. Like it's like the like the zombie the classic zombie like trope, right? That you see, right? And at the same time, when the after we see this, that's when we get to like the you know the the parent the parent Gotsky is telling Chief, you need to get back to your ship, get back to the ring now as soon as possible. And Chief says, no, I need to get to Cortana. Like he basically didn't say that, but he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not following you say. Halsey's in the room now with Perengoski, and she basically is trying to like guide him to get to Cortana because she knows exactly what he's going to go do. And he says, you got to go here. And then, so he gets into the room, and this is where I, I start losing my mind a little. So, hey, did, you know, did, we do, did we get to the jail cell with the... Well, no, because that, that's basically happening. It's happening all at the same time, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So... I, I, want, I gotta jump into all these cringe moments all at once. So then we jump. Yeah. This is this is the problem I have is that you know like because the pacing's all over the place, it then gets the one cringe moment to then do another and then another, and it just keeps compiling. So we get to the scene where you know he gets to the Covenant ship, and you know he's you know Cortana's like, "This is gonna go down, John. We're all gonna die if you stay here." And he's like, "No, you know you like you're not. We're not gonna die. You don't know everything, Cortana." So he needs to transfer her back to him somehow. But remember, remember, guys, the way that the story story wrote Cortana <clears throat> was that you have to have it embedded in your brain. There's no like chip. There's no like thing how it was in the games. Where you have like a chip you put in your helmet. There's nothing like that. What does John do? Imagine this. He takes his fist and he punches the computer and it transfers Cortana into his body like perfect and then they control the ship he lands on the ring now <clears throat> we're going to talk about what happens afterward with john but that that scene bothered me like i was just like that that doesn't make sense 
And like it was almost like John knew, like, oh, the doc, the scientist made it a th- absorption into my armor where I can punch things and absorb things out of it, like an AI if I wanted to. Because it's almost like the, and I think other people said this, it's like sci-fi magic that I'm going to punch this thing and it's gonna work when I need it to, like caveman brain, ah, and it worked perfectly rather than like actually having it make sense where you know like and i get it john has done things where he put his hand over you know a thing before but it was all because he had the you know chip in his brain or he had the chip in his helmet in the game but when you don't have that anymore then you can't do that it's just not magically like cortana's in my body now as i call i said i called it I called it out loud now she's in my body like it's not how it works and i was kind of frustrated that they just threw that in there for no reason. So I want to get your opinions about that. It was one of the dumbest things I saw recently. Well, Angelica, what was your opinion? <clears throat> um, I mean, there's there's a lot like going on, right? Because again, there, it, it's so rushed. The flash mob thing was hilarious. Um, I think we're gonna get into the jail cell where the girl officially turns, and then we'll see some mutations um, from a few people. So I think Mars will probably dive into that, and we can talk there. But. Um, yeah, the, the flood stuff was good. I actually really do like some of the flood stuff. The flash mob stuff was kind of stupid. Um, but then we get to the Master Chief getting to the Covenant ship where Cortana was destroyed, essentially. But she put herself into the ship um, where they used the drop pod Maquis in the Arbiter. But where is the rest of the crew? Right? Where's the rest of Arbiter's crew? Is another one that kind of confuses me. Like, it was just an empty ship. Um, so I'm guessing that they all went on the drop pod, or there literally was no one left besides Maki and the Arbiter. And, and so it, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, what? Why? And then he, you know, she's like, <laughs> he, he tells Mortana uh, that, you know, you don't know everything. And he knows to punch this thing, and that's what transfers her into his armor so he, he, knew. It just, he knew yeah it, it's just those weird things like i, I think don't it's, in, it's into his, the armor not into his body right it's into the chief's armor not into his yes. yeah, it's it's his armor. Armor. yeah but like well, i don't understand like how did he know that's Ridiculous. what would do it or how does cortana not know that hey put your hand on this and oh, why is know, it, it why why do we have a brain chip ever in the first place if you could have just put them in the armor like we all said to do since the very beginning like you, you don't have to have it in his brain that could kill him like that was the whole remember that was the whole like subplot they said well yeah, if we remove turned, it they, they, they were trying to kill that plot right so it's not the same people who wrote that plot in this season so I know, but it was just kind of like the punching part that doesn't make any sense but I yeah. you know th- this is a different Right, it's different writers, so they obviously moved away from that plot that she has to be in a brain chip. I I just I just get frustrated when I see dumb things like this and they try to explain it away like so fast, like just punch it. You got it, just punch it. You know, and, and so hockey, what what'd you feel about this? Yeah, let's kinda of keep it true and sweet here. Uh you know, the good I thought was Chief coming back, uh and, and helping out his his fellow Spartan uh threes, right? Uh kind of saving them. Really, uh, you know, he looks great. Whenever he's battling, uh, handling the sword, I think he looks great as well. Uh, and it showed that, you know, he can give off emotion with that helmet on. I know uh, Langella Kill uh, always says that. Marsman, you say that as well. You know, there is emotion when he has the helmet on, kind of like the Mandalorian. So, again, the writing kind of botched that back in season one, but at least we did see some good there. Action's always good. Uh, but yeah, the bad, like, I have written here like zombies really with a bunch of question marks like that that was kind of really silly uh kind of goes along with kwan's uh very wide open uh you know plot hole as well she's kind of connected uh in a weird way uh but yeah i mean it was it was kind of silly that part uh and there was a, a few parts obviously with parangoski that uh, I, I wish didn't happen uh yeah. but uh, other than that some pretty decent stuff so when we get to the like the final third, and this is where a lot of stuff happens. This is now we're in the prison cell. Obviously, the court, uh, Quan and Soren. Obviously, they end up saving. Uh, they end up saving everyone because because we start seeing the flood mutation happen. And this is where I actually was happy that you know because a lot of people were saying, "Hey, flood looks horrible. It's like the Walking Dead zombies." And I I disagree. I think they actually started the show 
<clears throat> that that mutation which we remember from the games now granted it's not to the same level but that's a lot to change from especially for a budget that's that's kind of limited right so this is actually not bad mutation i like the way they kind of depicted the flood here um and and Ackerson saves kessler and liara uh first and then obviously soren and kwan show up you know and, and save them all and obviously now Ackerson and, and kwan liara and and uh, kessler are all now all together you know going through the base and this is where we see the flood go full control right they're expanding they're trying to take take out these this group they start charging after soren and all of them and Quan for some reason doesn't understand you gotta run jack like you, you're like she's just slowly walking pop pop walking around pop 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 and then she eventually <coughs> she gets, she's cleaning a lot of them i'm not gonna lie it, the, these flood are i wish they flood from the library halo one were this easy to take down because they were going down like you should have had a gallon gun <laughs> and and so she was cleaning a lot of them right but soren's like what run like get out of here and she ends up getting locked back oh she's stuck and <laughs> and i was like yo is Quan about to die here i didn't think so but then all of a sudden shaman shows up blood stop right they're all frozen and and the shaman just starts giving her monologue about Quan. you know you're you're protector of the ring your, your ancestors are here with me these beings are the equalizer they are the flood right and and she they they froze the flood and said you need to get out of here you need to run and it tells Quan to get out of there she is able to dip in weed and escape that <laughs> that entire that entire thing and now i'm gonna i'm gonna have to like just get really I have to take a sip of my tea because I have to say something really important. And this is where I get upset. You know, I tried to think of every possible reason that this shaman lady could stop the flood. And me and Jelly Kill were talking about this before. It has to be the grave mine, right? Everyone said it has to be the grave mine. But then I thought about it. And when I watched it over again, I said, <clears throat> she straight up said the ancestors are about with her. And that we're I can only hold them back for so long. And my 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 all my hopium for what that my thought process was disappeared. This is not the grave mine. As much as I thought, hey, you know what? It could be because it's trying to trick her to get to the ring, because she has the ability to teleport to the ring with that door she opened. And maybe that's what they're trying to do is get access to like the flood world, I mean the forerunner world, or maybe get to the ring. Like all that, right? Maybe. But it doesn't seem like that, especially with the shaman, like, oh, with the ancestors behind me, we're stopping them. Like, I'm not just like, no, dude, it doesn't make any sense. It just, you just basically added in this whole component that now Juan has access to mystical powers. The ancestry is preventing the flood now from another dimension from killing Quan. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Angelica, what's your, I know you're shaking your head before. Uh, it I doesn't. I, I I really don't have much to add on this Quan aspect. You know, we're trying to think of the shaman worm, and we've we've had conversations with our viewers, and they're like, oh, you know, is this a precursor human, right? Is that is that what Quan ancestry is? And say, okay, so that's why she gets visions of forerunner stuff. But how do they have control over the flood? How do they have control over the flood? The, the, I don't understand how a, a precursor human or a librarian, neither of them had control over the flood. The only person who can is the Grave Mind, and I'm trying to think of this 4D chess that the Grave Mind would be playing here um, as this shaman woman preventing the flood from consuming her at this moment, and maybe it's to get to the, but like, I, I'm not seeing it. I, I'm not seeing it. That That's the part that just, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. It's like, it's it's magic. That's what it's this sci-fi magic that we're just supposed to consume. And I know there's going to be a lot of people who say, well, they're going to explain it. They're going to explain it. But there's other things that have happened, you know, that they don't explain. They're just assuming that you like know or just have to accept. Right. And like this feels like one of them. Like what exact how did they have control um, if this is not the great one? I, I, I really don't. I really don't know. I really don't know. It, you know, it is uh, the flood was fighting against the ancient humans and eating them, right? That how is it possible? Ancient humans who aren't mystical, they don't have special powers. They're just 
ancient humans that lived during the time of the forerunners that's it so there's no reason why they should have the ability to from the next dimension stop blood from from killing people like because it makes no sense it really doesn't make any sense whatsoever it's just they added a a, a quan quan can't die right now so we have to give a reason that quan doesn't die the build suspense <laughs> and it just makes no sense and hockey what do you want to say for this last for this part before we jump to the next uh last yeah here? again just uh broken record here the the hole just gets bigger um you know i, I was very confused during that part um, for a second, I thought, yeah, she helped the flood, or she's gonna help the flood. Uh, and she didn't know she was getting tricked, um, and then she escaped. So it was, it was very, very confusing. Um, and yeah, I mean, they just they had a couple chances to kill her off, you know, and then they glassed magical, which which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but yeah, just super confusing. Yeah, it was like they're trying to give Quan. Well, because you're saying about the glass magical, they like they're like, getting rid of all these things that Quan has involved. with. So now we just have to give her more. Like she's connected to the flood, getting getting prophecies about the flood in her mind. Shaman lady's now here to give Quan some some guidance. But I'll be honest with you, there's no, there's like there's there, they keep throwing things at Quan to have and do, but it doesn't make sense. It just you're just throwing things to get people to be like, oh well, Quan. <laughs> now I'll be honest, Quan in this season is way better than the first season, yeah, I mean, way better. But at the same time, yeah, it's like though. it's like you're just you're just trying to give her stuff to do. And yeah. everything you do she's is just connected to a huge part of the storyline, which is the flood now. Yeah, um, she's she's got a contract, but she needs to be she needs to be written in somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so mm. right from there, when when I see now now Liara, who is who is Soren's wife, she gets infected. So when Quan gets out, she stays behind, and she's like, I'm I'm infected. You know, be a father, be, take care of Kessler for me, and and they dip to get out of there. Now, at the same time, in, in the main base where Paragoski and Halsey are, the flood is there currently, and Halsey sees right away that we, I gotta get out of here. This is gonna get really bad. And and all of a sudden, the flood started attacking everybody. She even gets attacked by, by a person who's infected, and the flood people are jumping on people, eating people, killing people, and Halsey somehow avoids, gets out of the, all of it, closes the door behind her, and we got old ass Paragoski is getting eaten by a bunch of flood in like an instant, like a character who is so important this entire time, of a, almost an antagonist that we've had this whole time, gets gets clapped in a matter of seconds yeah. with no real like, oh my god, Paragotsky dies. Like there's no like, there's just, just uh, like, oh, like there, there's that, no, there's no, there, there's there's no like it's just so fast. Burn all the bridges. Right it's away. so fast, yeah, and it's just like, yeah, we have to round these things out. And how about, I gotta say, I don't know what's going on. That was so, her death thing was so weird, dude. Like, she's, like, staring at Halsey, like, they're looking at each other while she gets mobbed by, uh, by Flood. And even, uh, Soren's wife dying, like, it just didn't have the impact that, like, you know, I, and I don't blame the like, actress. It just, everything went so fast, no one cares. No, no yeah, no, I'm like, no. I'm like, and then like, and like, and this is where I get, this is, and then this bothered me, and I know that this probably might have bothered you guys, but oh, so then yeah. we get the scene with with Kai right now. Kai is taking the ship, and she clearly like, all right, I'm going to pilot the ship. She gets the control, fine, cool, I like that idea. And she goes to the biggest cruiser, and she's like, all right, I'm going to slam into this thing, and while Perez is like looking up, like trying to get up to go see, like look at the ship as it's flying close to the thing. And as it's about to slam into it, Kai takes all the emotion out of this scene and just goes, well, that's just going to hurt. And I was just like, you just ruined one of the coolest parts of this episode with one of the cringest lines. Yeah, I think it's going to hurt, Kai. I think, yeah, I think it's going to hurt. Like, you're, you're you kidding me? Like, you could have done anything. You could have said nothing. And it would have been a better emotional scene. I heard people cry. They said they cried this episode after they watched it. Like people were tearing up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You cried at what? What'd you cry about? This? Like as much as I thought this is a cool scene, they could have filed reach. They could have did a nugget to the game and just did exactly what Carter did in that game and just said she could have been talking like Perez could have had her helmet on still and been like, Kai, what are you doing? And she's like, you got to continue the fights, Perez. Like this is Kai signing. This is Spartan one seven eight signing off, and then blast into the ship, 
And I would have been like, that's a cool ass way to go out. Like I thought even key, like keys to say, hey, you guys got a light and the whole bomb blow and all the fire blows up. That's a way you go out. No, yeah, well, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Die. It just dies. Like, like it's like it's a great achievement. She's floating in space. You don't know she's yeah, we dead. Don't know. Yeah, we but, don't know. But Which even I don't that, know how. I know even that. I don't know how she would even live, that, but... Like it's a straight up. You blew up the entire both ships combined. Your your armor is really strong. Mueller armor is really strong, but it's not impenetrable. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like the freaking the freaking uh, you know, like Chief's armor is getting blasted by just energy energy swords. And you're telling me that explosions ain't killing you? You know what I mean? Like I just like, like that doesn't make sense. Like that just doesn't make sense to me. But you like wasted that that cool scene you could have done. Like, granted, like it still was cool, but like you could have done. Just, come on, simple stuff. Like you're wasting, you're just losing that. And then like yeah. the last part. So then Chief is on the ring now. I love the dialogue between him and Cortana. It was almost like, damn, this is exactly what you want to hear between these two characters because it sounds just like the games. Very great dialogue between the two of them. And what's wild to me is as we get to like the final the, the, the fight. So so now Master Chief just walks his way to the Arbiter and, and Maki who are who are at the platform. Just hilarious to me because it proves to me that there is no covenant on this ring. It's literally just a total of three people. The Arbiter, Maki, and Chief are all the only people on this ring at this point. Cortana. And, yeah, Cortana. And the, so the Cortana. AI Cortana. Yeah. Nobody else. The Covenant didn't even get there. This Arbiter's crew, clearly, he has no one left. They're not there. Chief just, just moonwalks his way to the to the platform. And now is the face-off. Now, the fight itself I thought was good. I thought I know that there's a lot of uh there's a whole lot of animation, which is fine. A lot of their a lot of their money went into this. Um so, so whatever so, was left of the budget was blown right here. Yeah, Every, right here. <laughs> everything they had. The, all the money they had was left. All the money for writers they could have possibly bought was for this. And they fought. Uh, <laughs> they fought. And yeah, it was a good scene. Like, I liked the fact that even I was afraid that when Chief had his armor, I thought, oh, God, the Arbiter is going to get his ass blasted. And, and they didn't. He actually, it was pretty even. And to the point where Arbiter was like, I won. And then he turns around and, Ar and he gets up again. And he's got the classic, oh, I'm not done with you. Like, I got right. you, no Nobel. <laughs> no and they fight again, and, and Chief gets the advantage. He beats him, and it very reminds me of um, the Halo Infinite ending with uh, with uh, that room, basically kind of like a soldier's honor honorable death. And he's basically saying, you know, I, what do you do with a soldier who has no worth anymore, who can't fight anymore? And I thought that was a good line. I was like, that's that's literally yeah, like I mean, that's, he, has, that's, he has to die, right? The Arbiter has to. He, he's he's yeah. the, one of the best characters, so. The show has they to gotta, they make gotta sure you get, get rid of him. Don't let yeah. him have his. Don't have, let him have his day. Let him have some story, story development, or anything like that. So, um, <clears throat> so Chief kills him. You know, ends his ends his life honorably. And <clears throat> at the same time, Maki somehow, some way, sneaks her way to the stairs, right? And then and says to John, "I I am also a demon," like which made made me like. Like I wish I wish they showed his face under the armor. Like I look at him like, no, you're not, because it was almost like, <coughs> like if you're trying to say okay, like it, so we're at both levels of like the leaders of this new factions going forward. That's what they're gonna say. These are the two characters. That yeah. that's what their plan is. But Maki has zero like stand put to to chief. Like they're they're not equals, right? They aren't equals. He's called the demon because he literally can wipe out so many aliens. Maki's not doing that. Her whole plan, and she's deluded, is that she's going to use it to basically wipe out humanity and then start anew on the ring. Yeah, wipe out everyone. Yeah. And then she would just start anew on the, on the ring and start fresh. Yeah. But she's also dumb and she doesn't realize what it actually does. Um, and so that's her plan. He says you can't let her do that, and then she, he lets her run into the, the facility. Oh, yeah. Run right into the ring. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, and then him and Cortana are like, all right, you ready to go? And I'm ready. And they jump, hop right in, and, and then we hit the final thing with, uh, and this is what bothers me, with Miranda and Halsey, and because yeah. it literally transitions right to that, and then in the final final scene, where Halsey finds a way to get to Miranda. Somehow she avoids all the flood, gets to Miranda, and she locks the door. It's like, oh, oh my god, it's all this science shit like that we have that we can go investigate now. 
and she also freezes just like the flash mob and she's sick she's infected so what does miranda do miranda says we gotta stop the infection throws her mom into a han solo cryo chamber and freezes her <laughs> freezes her in there right to stop the spread which i never once heard that that was ever a thing you can't just freeze someone and stop the spread of the flood but I'm sure people out there are going to try to make excuses for it. So, okay, let's let's just yeah. put devil's advocate. Let's just say that happens. Miranda then says a line right, very right after. It says, I'll find the cure. And that bothers me probably more than anything of this episode. Because I and people actually stood there and said, well, you know, there was there was times where they that the uh, the primordial was trying to say that there was a there was a cure to trick the forerunners. But that's the point, guys. There wasn't actually a cure to to the flood, right? They the primordial, which basically was the first hive mind against the flood, against the forerunner, and he basically tricked them into thinking there, that there was a cure, so that he can use that to an advantage. That means there isn't a cure, and the reason why we know this is because when the forerunners realized there's no such thing as a cure, the only solution is to wipe out all their food and use yeah. the halo rings to wipe out everybody, because if you kill their food, they die because they can't eat. I so know. it's like yeah. that's a, if you're and then here's the the the, the nut puncher is <clears throat> the forerunner who are light years ahead of humanity in technology innovation and all this if they can't find a cure to the flood but then we got miranda keys in a broken down lab covered with the flood is gonna find a cure to save her mom that breaks this storyline it breaks the concept of halo because the whole point is that halo rings are the final solution that's the point of them so you just nullified the halo rings if there is a cure that's found you nullify them you never have to use them if you know there's a cure so i know what the writers are trying to do they're trying to give miranda an elevated role in this yeah I, I mean how does miranda even get out right because when at the end of that scene too she's looking and there's a flood just sitting outside the window um she's in a base full of infected flood zombies yeah um, yeah, so I don't even know how she even gets out of this. Now, granted, just because she says she's going to find it doesn't mean she will. But it, I mean, why say that if if that's not what the mission is, right? I I just don't I don't understand why they need to include that. They could have just froze the bomb, froze Halsey, and just stopped. It. But like they're adding in this, I'll find a cure. No, yeah, why, no. yeah. don't do that. It just that it breaks ruins. It. it breaks the that line. Completely break breaks it if you do that no opening up another plot hole just yeah just adds in more just we got to bring intrigue is there going to be a cure like that's what they want people to think and yeah. that it ends with i don't know if this is foreshadowing it probably is of if they have a season three it ends with master chief is talking directly to three for three guilty spark who was the monitor of the installation alpha installation that they're on um which is basically the one that the, the forerunner monitor that is used to initiate the ring sequence, right? And he's basically saying to the chief, well, should I trust you or should I trust her? She's saying not to trust you. You're saying not to trust her. I don't know which one I should. Right? And and he also kind of in, in says that I'll be watching you. And it's like, he also be watching. And it kind of seems like he's referencing like the like maybe a hive mind. They're not really clear about if it's really just saying I'll be watching you in the darkness or like whatever it may be. It just it ends with that and the monitor is out and she puts on his helmet and there's a glass piece of his visor is broken and that's how the season ends now when i think about this this you know, we could kind of jump into the season outlook overall now and the problem with this 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 finale doing what it did was and i think we talked about this before but it feels like they're trying to blow the load and try to get everybody to be hyped for season three to so maybe sorry to get hype for the show so there is a season three. Yeah, a season three. Yeah. Because because yeah. at this point, even like Kiki Wolfkill, who single handedly had caused this this show to fail yeah. by allowing for a lot of these changes to happen and make a lot of Halo fans upset. Now I know there's a lot of Halo fans out there, and these are fans of our channel that are fans of the show, and nothing against that. I just I just think that there's a lot more people out there that are not fans of the show because of the things they changed. And Kiki Wolfkill even said, you know, there is aspects we wish we could have expanded on. But we didn't have the funding. We had to speed through stuff like the fall of reach. She even admitted that we wanted to spend more time on that, but we couldn't because of because of money purposes. 
and we had to speed through a lot of story plots for that reason and it shows because the last episode you could have taken that stuff and spread that over a few and you would have probably did so much better job at it than what they yeah. did here and and I'll, I'll let you guys talk first about your overall overall like seasonal outlooks and i'll jump into what i think um, i'm gonna make a whole video about the seasonal kind of my overall opinion and and if they were to do something going forward like how they should how, how they could fix themselves or just like my overall feelings about this season so i'll let you guys talk first about it and i'll give my like little blurb so let's what, what is your overall feeling about this season as a whole yeah i, I it, this is a tough one to evaluate because two things are true number one this is better than season one um i think we're all in agreement here that this is better in season one on multiple different avenues um where number one i think the writing is more organized i think number two the company look better uh, than they did season one and you know some of the set pieces and action pieces were pretty strong um so to me overall i think season two is better than season one however I don't think this is a very satisfying Halo show. I, I know that these nuggets that they give you, which are good, like you see a scorpion, you see a wraith, you know, you see the dual needlers, you see the chief fighting uh, elites, but they're just, it's not as frequent as we'd all hope. And the stupidity parts are just so pronounced. They're so strong that it really does even out some of that good stuff that you see. I mean, we didn't even talk about, we don't even know how Maki's alive. We don't know how Maki's alive. Like, we, we, we're we going into season three. Like, season two ended. We don't even know how, how Maki's alive right now. Um, but she is, and she's a prominent character. Quan's a prominent character. And... To me, when I was going into season two, I was hoping for a complete 180 from season one. And I don't think we got a complete 180. I think they got better feedback. I think they ran closer to Halo. But to me, it's not as satisfying of a Halo show um, for me. Because I guess my thought is I could think of Halo show to be great. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, this is the best sci-fi show out today. Yeah, but what name the other sci-fi shows? Like, what, what are the sci-fi shows going on? <laughs> So, like, to me, that's kind of the stuff that that does drive me crazy. It's definitely better than season one, but it just has a low ceiling because of the writing. And because, if we're being quite frank, Mars just said it, budgeting issues is another thing. Like, you could tell, like, the first season one of Halo was the 14th most expensive show ever made. They definitely had less money this season because they wrote the Spartans to not have their armor for, like, 60% mm -hmm. of this season. Exactly. And you can tell they didn't want to go into reach because they didn't have the budget. There, There is, without question, constraints budget-wise that have hurt the overall telling of this show that they had to rush and say, hey, there's going to be flood. We're going to get to the ring. So, like, be st stay hyped in it. And I think the second half of the season was definitely a downward uh, trend compared to the first four episodes. Yeah, and Hockey, what do you feel overall about the uh, about the season? And I'll jump into my thing after yours. Yeah, to be honest, uh, overall, uh, you know, as a Halo show, the season was mediocre. Uh, I don't think they could really, you know, save what happened, uh, you know, in season one. We're kind of looking at a Star Wars uh, eight nine scenario where, uh, you know, it was it was so pretty much season one was so bad that season nine, although the writing did get better as Blangella Kill. Uh, had said it really couldn't uh you know write it better than uh i guess what they had had, had for the money uh for this season um you know I, I think the biggest thing was missed opportunities we didn't really get to see a uh, silver team uh in action uh, like langella kill said because they wrote in uh a a armor um you know uh, uh hostage takeover i forgot the yeah, a, a hostile takeover of the armor, which is, uh, you know, unbelievable. Um, you know, and, and Maki, Quan plot holes, uh, you know, we didn't really get to see uh, the Arbiter uh, really, uh, you know, evolve into anything until Chief, you know, kind of clapped him. So there was a lot of missed opportunities here. Yeah, so I kind of look at this in a multi-tiered way, right? I think when I think about 
as a as a Halo fan, right? I know that there are fans of the show that might be Halo fans that, I, and we've seen them that have been very like, you know what? This is a Halo project. I am going to support it to the best of my ability and take the positive as much as I can. And, and normally, I'm one. I am one of those people in a way. But when I when I there's only to a certain extent, I have to be true to myself. If I look at a Halo project and I say this is not representative of what Halo means or what it does then I'm not going to be a fan of it. I'm going to give the best I can by looking at what the positives are and say, hey, this is what I like and this is what I don't like. But unfortunately, the show has more negatives to me than positives. And I'll be honest with you, when I looked at season one, I was extremely excited. And then as the season went on, I started to get less and less because of the things I started to see. And I said to myself, okay, well, unless you want to lose all the rest of the Halo fans, off the board then you need to change some things and i and i made a whole video about my predictions of what i want to see and pre predominantly most fans said we need to see chief with more armor on and what did they do instead of them not like just having him his helmet off and all that that was the biggest thing no, no armor on just walking around bases they literally wrote it in that he would not have his armor for three quarters of the show of the season they wrote it in and it was almost like kind of like a spit in the face of a lot of people that wanted more armor combat scenes like you basically did the opposite of what fans wanted right and then they said all right well who are the most two hated characters of the show Quan and maki and what do you do you give them more roles maki is now one of the biggest antagonist of the show and Quan has this old mega mega important character trait with her that now she is a defender of the ring and even has ancestry that will combat against the flood and it's like you're giving them so important characters because now the three most important characters of the show technically is master chief maki and kwan like in two of the three and then here's the crazy part master chief their main character is one of the top three most disliked characters of the show yes that's like, one thing and, i didn't add uh, yeah the, yeah it's just the main just, master chief is so he's so different and that season two did not change that yeah season one he was so unbelievably different season two he's less of what he was in season one but still so far away it feels like he's a different he is a different character like if he wasn't yeah, master season chief, one was such a shock. yeah if he wasn't master chief if he was just some other character, general shepherd of mass effect or maybe you can even picard but like he's emotional he's, he's so unbelievably emotional he he really only succeeds less than half of his missions i mean if we're being honest between the two seasons he only had one successful he only, only had one successful mission that was you know, saving like just, kai and them like, that was about yeah, it. And, it, it and and defeating the armor so too he's playing such a different character right now it's hard to connect yeah. that guy he saved him a couple times too it's like so it's ridiculous just, and, and you know what it is like that's the problem the overarching problem is that you think about the characters you like versus the characters you don't the Arbiter, one of the best characters, gets killed. Okay, Halsey is now frozen solid. So she's if you have a season three, she's not going to be in it really for most of it. Keys is gone. He's dead. Cortana is the only character that's still alive. That's still we're going to be prevalent. Soren, I don't even know what the hell they're going to do with Soren anymore, and he's even lost for me Leading too. His character's bleeding. So it's just like you're losing the characters. I and and Ackerson, 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 I like right. But yeah, it's what just are they like, doing with him too? I know that's what I'm saying. So it's like, so it's like a part of me is like, you're you're lo all the best characters are gone, or are useless, or are barely going to be shown, and then all the bad, the worst characters are the most prevalent ones. So it's like you're 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 not making me feel like glad that I'm all going to watch the next episode, like because I really don't like some of these people you're telling me to go see, right? And on and on top of that, this is where people miss out when I don't really understand their perspective about this is this is a halo show and i always see people say well you know this is their perspective about halo i get it but when you start losing characters main story plot the setting is going to be different for a lot of things that we're doing then what do you have left like the, what is what is left the name you just have you just have the halo ring it's there the halo ring's there but guess what if if you use this like whole cure then you just nullify the only thing that this show is named after so it's like you're you're trying to make a not Halo show by using the name Halo and just making their own show based around sci-fi. Like yeah. that's 
I know it's crazy, and, and I'll, this will be kind of the last point for me before we jump into anything else you guys want to say is, you know, I, I don't know if this is, uh, I think his last name is Wiener, the right showrunner. I don't know if it's if it's really his fault entirely, because I know that Paramount is notorious for basically telling people to write a show that they don't want to write. And Wiener, like, this is definitely way better than season one, but could I put it past Paramount that, that they might have nuked a lot of these Halo lore components that he wanted to do? Maybe. Maybe he is part of the problem. Maybe. I don't know. But that's part of the issue here, and I honestly don't think with how much divisiveness as this show has caused between the fan bases and and everybody else i don't know if this gets to season three and you can tell that by how kiki wolfkill and even three for three talk about it they're like I, this might not be a goodbye hopefully it's not like we don't we don't know what's gonna happen right we haven't heard anything yet last season one when it's it ended maybe three weeks later they were renewed like it was it was instant so we don't know if that's going to happen for this. If it does, then I'd be surprised that it was that quick. But it's up in the air right now. But anything for, from you guys before we uh, before we finish out of here? Yeah, I, I'll say this. Um, fans that do love it. There's some Halo fans that really do like the show. And again, you guys like what you like. I, I'm not going to disparage. I don't like people like shaming uh, people for liking the show. Like saying you're not really a Halo fan if you like the show. Like that, that to me... Um, is way too excessive. And then on the other side, it's like, well, if you don't like the show, you're the reason why these things will get canceled, right? So like, we're not, you know, we're not making the show, right? We're we're t talking about the show from a Halo fan's perspective. And we tried as hard throughout this entire season to try to remove the Halo cap that we have on, right? But again, it's it's it is a Halo show, right? Like that's what it's called. And if they just wanted to make a sci-fi show. They absolutely could have, but they wanted the name Halo and they wanted the Master Chief and they wanted Cortana and they wanted the Covenant. They wanted these assets of Halo, but they wanted all the freedom in the world to change it to see, you know, to their best interests. And so, you know, these are the type of things where, you know, you, you, you have to be a little critical of them if they're going to completely change and it doesn't have to be one for one. It never had to be one for one, but there's a you don't have to make changes just for change. And that's kind of the issue. And I do wish there is more Halo, uh, even live action. But personally, I don't want it to be Paramount. Um, I'm kind of off the Paramount train when it comes to making Halo content. And I hope somebody else picks it up. Yeah, Hockey, what do you think, man? Yeah, I, I don't think that the yeah, Silver Timeline should have ever featured uh, Master Chief if this is how they were going to portray him. Um, again, you know, Langella Kill kind of said it perfectly. You know, if you're a Halo fan and you like the show, that's, you know, totally up to you. You know, a lot of people I know do like the show. Uh, but I know a lot of Halo fans that uh, definitely wanted it a little closer to lore. Um, and I think that's the boat that we were in. Uh, but, again, I don't see it getting to a season three um if i do i do want it to get to a season three but i would not want it with paramount i need a bigger player maybe an amazon someone with more money to kind of give me more of, of what a halo show really should be you know what it is for me and i'll, I'll say this to finalize it when you don't have a source material to compare this to then that's one thing but when you have literally source material from the games from books and all of them tell the story better then it's kind that's where i kind of like say i have to be critical because so i'm like all right how paramount gets to the ring compared to how the games got to the ring these writers and other people they did it like the games and, and the books they did it better because they it was more cohesive it made more sense it wasn't like there was plot holes that just threw in there like it was more pacing made sense to me and that, maybe that's what it is for fans who have never played the games never read the books and this is their first experience of halo and they love it like I, i'm not gonna say you're wrong but i would also say you know what to understand the perspective of us go play the game like go play halo one go play halo reach go play those games look at those other source materials and then come back and talk to us about it because i feel like that way you can get a perspective from from what all these other halo fans have and then maybe you'd be like, oh, wow, I do like that. Or if you still have your same opinion, then that's fine, too. But it's like, that's that's our boat. 
we are big in all these games and all that stuff and then we look at it, we compare it and we say yeah you know what for a sci-fi show it's probably the better sci-fi show out there but what do you got to compare it to star trek discovery right like that's that's it like everyone else stinks it's like yeah this is the best one but uh, for a halo a halo lore a halo story it's not that great compared to the games like so it's like yeah that's just our opinion and now we still gave our our best our our honest or positives and negatives all about it so so that's our overall outlook of the second season of the halo show but what do you think about its overall performance did you like it do you think it will have a third season let us know what you think in the comments below if you like this type of content make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel until next time this is marsman signing off peace out guys